verse 15. As I said, I just feel the presence of God here. Tonight I just want um, the Word of God being ministered tonight through to us. I just want it to be a time to be lost in the presence of God. Every one of us, that's what it's about. And uh, something we don't hear oftentimes preached about in mainstream uh, churches, and I'm, I'm not being slanderous by saying that, but, but I'm saying that because we're getting away from the truth of God's Word because uh, sometimes it hits home too closely and uh, it's not a popular message. But I want to preach a, a message tonight on separation. And we'll use different words for that as we find throughout the Word of God. And I'm telling you, it'll be the most popular thing that your soul has ever heard if you'll grab hold of it. Amen. God wants a sanctified people. Amen. The challenge that God gave is come out from among them and be separate. Amen. So from Old Testament, from the very beginning of the Old Testament, all the way through to the New Testament, God talks about wanting a people that are separated. So tonight, I'm going to look at that in Leviticus chapter 15, and I'm going to read verse number 31. I want to give you a bit of a background. I'll be a bit vague because you can read it. You talk about the Word of God. It gets personal. And uh, so there are some things that are being talked about here, uh, separation, purification of women. You can understand that a little better when you look at verse number 19 on. And uh, so as we read the, the setting of what is happening here, uh, uh, men uh, needing to be uh, separated and set apart uh, due to being pure, purification and sanctification, God gives a message to the church. And it's something that is built upon throughout the entire Word of God. And uh, it's challenging tonight as we look at this. The Bible says, Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. Amen. Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. Praise God. The truth uh, that is here tonight is encouraging to know that we should be conscious of the power of God and that God through His power wants us to actively make a decision to separate ourselves wholly unto Him. Praise God. Praise God, the blessing of that. And uh, we'll find that uh, uh, here it is that, 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 that there's atoning power in the blood of Jesus Christ and through the authority of Scripture and through the freedom of living in His Spirit that even secret sins, amen, God can wash and cleanse of them. Generational sins, God can break them, the curse, the bondage of them, and set free. Amen. Some folks may say, well, 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 it's in my nature. My family's always been this way. God breaks generational curses. God breaks generational sins. And so uh, as we look at this, uh, understanding uh, the context of our scripture, uh, that God uh, gives a challenge here. And uh, here in Leviticus, it's about separation. And, it, and it, the, what it embodies is the greatness of being separated from sin, the things of the world. Amen. And so we're going to break this down into three different thoughts as we look at scripture tonight, as we look at separation. The very first thing I want to look at is this. He says, uh, Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. Let's look at the purpose of separation. The purpose was that uh, they were to be separated for purification. So there's a separation that happens because God wants them to be purified. Now, uh, uh, I, I read one commentator, and I, his, his idea of separation was very good to the point, uh, but, but I, I'd like to make this comparison. 
Separation is like this. It's like preaching. A separation is like preaching uh, 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 to people. They like it about as much as someone's interested in buying a snow cone during the middle of a blizzard. Or how, how much they're drawn to a hot fire in the middle of summer. It's just not a popular message. A lot of folks don't like to hear that. Uh, but God definitely still wants us to preach, to live, to engage our life in separation and in sanctification. He does. And so uh, uh, separation, uh, those who practice it are often called snooty or holier than thou. Uh, the, the devil, he wants to criticize separation because he knows when people begin to separate themselves wholly unto God, W-H-O-L-L-Y, and so that they can be holy, H-O-L-Y, unto God. Amen. The devil likes to criticize, but God is still looking. And the challenge is still to us tonight that we need to be a separated, a sanctified people. The Word of God says that you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. Amen. God still wants ecclesiastical separation. He does not want us to mingle in the things of this world because it, it, it affects our testimony. It affects our influence. It affects the message that we preach and we give. God help us tonight to be a distinct, a peculiar, a separated, a holy, a sanctified, a pure people under God. Amen. So there's a purpose of separation because God doesn't like uncleanness. And uncleanness will mar the message of purity and holiness that God reaches out to a lost and a dying world. Separation. The doctrine of separation, amen, is so important because the doctrine needs to be lived so that the message can be preached. God wants us to choose a life of separation. God wants us to discipline ourselves in a life of separation. God wants to sanctify people wholly unto Him. We live in a world, in a church age, where there is no distinction between holy and unholy. But God said that they would separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. There was a conscious act. The purpose is separate yourself, that you're not unclean. I want you to think about a few things this evening. What is that? Separation in our lifestyle? I'm not looking tonight at preaching things where we look back and say, well, the markers have been moved. We shouldn't move the markers. I'm not looking at a standard from yesteryear. I'm not looking at a standard of what the church used to be. I'm looking at a standard of what the church should always be. I'm talking about separating ourselves wholly unto God, things that would defile us, that get in our life and keep us from living holy and pure unto God. We live in a world, and if we're not careful, the culture of this world will affect our thinking. It'll affect the way that we react. It'll affect the way that, that, that we console ourselves. Uh, oh, you know, it's interesting that some people like to console themselves with comfort food. Uh, it goes way beyond the realm of food. Amen. The things that we want to comfort ourselves with. But if we're not careful, it'll bring us into unholy living. And God said to separate them from their unpureness. I want a clean people. Uh, the best way that we can live for God is to separate ourselves holy unto His Word, holy unto His Spirit, amen, holy to a place of prayer, holy to a place of consecration, that we become more like Him and less like the world. 
I was talking with some folks and they shared with me, hey man, it's interesting, I like talking to folks of every age. I'm finding that I like to talk to older folks and their perception of things change. And, and, and when I was talking, they said, you know, I understand as I get older, I have more on the other side than I have on this side anymore. And so I, I, I'm not afraid to go knowing that, that I love the Lord and the Lord has everything taken care of. Amen. When we begin to get our roots deeper in the things of God than what we have in the things of this world, when our treasure is laid up on the other side more than the gain on this side when our heart is so toward the holiness of God that the things of this world that we say I'm no longer no longer do I feel like I'm part of this world but I'm just a pilgrim passing through amen my home is on the other side where my maker is and where my creator is and where my savior is amen and my heart longs to be like it so I want to be with him. There should be a desire to be holy in our life in every area. Holy. So the purpose was for separation. That ye shall be separated, that ye shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. The second thing is the protection and separation. That they die not in their uncleanness. Now it's interesting how that on, on a realm in, in, in the physical sense we really try to be clean. I'm probably more of a germaphobe with my girls because in my mind there's lots of scenarios and I've seen lots of things and heard lots of cases. So the hand sanitizers are friend. And we like that. And thank God for that. But, but I want you to think, and, 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 and this, is, this is the idea that we've got to understand, that purity promotes life. Sister Bev, I don't want to go to a doctor that's seen someone with strep throat, and now he's taking her out of my mouth without ever washing his hands. I have a friend that her daughter is in her first year of med school. A couple of weeks ago, when she started, I said, I said, how's your daughter doing in med school? She said, well, right now, uh, all they're studying is about hand washing. Isn't that interesting? I don't know. My wife and Sister Tiffany, they're nurses. Maybe they remember that. Maybe that's what they started out with in nursing school. But, you know, they're drilling them in the very first part that we've got to be clean to stop germs. And we do. And so we think about that in the physical sense because we know that uh, there's a container on the, on the wall in, 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 in the doctor's office in the hospitals. They know to promote good health. Amen. What are they doing? They're being clean. They know that that's where it starts. How in our spiritual sense do we ever get to the place where we think that we can live a healthy life without ever having pureness and cleanness as part of our life? The Bible says this, that they die not in their uncleanness. God wants a clean people. God wants a sanctified people. God wants a people that rid themselves of uncleanness that can bring germs and eventually bring death. So we know what bacteria and germs, we protect ourselves from that. Yet spiritually, the idea of separation sometimes is mocked in churches because we think it's crazy. But God wants a separate people. Hey, Amen. I want folks to look at me. And when they look at me, they know that He lives differently. I want people. Uh, 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 he, uh, I, I won't say it. Uh, yeah, I guess I have to sometimes be careful. So I, I just, let me get my thoughts together here. Uh, you, I, I don't want Brother Craig. I don't want people to feel like they can start cursing around me. I, I don't want them to feel at liberty. I don't want them, Sister Beth, to feel like I, I'm the God that can be in the room when they tell their dirty joke. Amen. Because God's brought me out of that life. Amen. I want people to know that I live differently. You know why? Brother Dennis, it's not 
because I want to be an oddball. It's not because I want to be holier than thou. Because there's nothing about me and myself that is holy. But it's the Spirit of God that dwells in me and through me. I want God to be exemplified. Because I know that me cleansing my life is my way of engaging in life. And life everlasting. So that is why I cleanse myself. The Word of God says that they die not in their uncleanness. God help us to have protection from the germs, the bacteria of this world because we wash ourselves in the blood of Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. God cleanse me, purify me, sanctify me, consecrate me. I want to be holy unto you. Tonight God's looking for people that will separate themselves. Amen. Sin is still sin tonight. Sin is still sin. And what was sin in the Old Testament and the New Testament and what was preached as sin in your life, amen, is still sin. God hasn't changed the markers. It's still sin. And then the third thing that I see is this. Not only the purpose of separation, number one, thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. Number two, that they die not in their sin, the protection of separation, but the piety of separation. Will they defile my tabernacle that is among them? Tonight, I want worship that is uncorrupted. Aaron's sons, they offered strange fire. They paid for it. They didn't protect the deity of God. God help us that we protect the deity of God. And so, uh, uh, ecclesiastical or church separation and sanctification means this. It means undefiled worship. I want God when He looks at our hands and when He looks at our hearts and He hears verbalization of praise from our lips, I want Him to look and say, that is undefiled. Amen. That is a people who has separated themselves and sanctified themselves wholly unto me. Amen. And so as we're, we're separated, it brings a, 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 a piety, a deity unto God. Amen. Because God, uh, He honors separation. And God loves holy worship. Amen. He loves when we worship Him in spirit and in truth. What is truth is when we're undefiled, when we're separated, when we're sanctified unto Him. God, help us tonight to wash and cleanse and separate ourselves unto Him. There's a few things about separation, and we can use lots of words tonight. I'll get to it in just a few moments. Sanctification, holiness, consecration, they're all synonyms for the word holy. 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 In Isaiah chapter number 6, the worship. Holy. 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 Real worship. Is holy unto God. I'm separated. I can't mistreat someone. I have to love God with all my heart and love my neighbor as myself. I have to love the Word of God. My desire has to be that God is pleased with my actions, my attitude, with every internal motive. I want to be holy. I want to be like God. How would God respond in this situation? What would God want me to respond? How does God want me to live? That is sanctification. So when we look at that of being holy, there's a few things tonight. Number one, it is that separation. That God separates the earthly and human things. And He brings absolute morality. Amen. He brings holiness to the object. You can't do it yourself. But when you allow the Spirit of God to begin to get in you, and the Holy Ghost to work, and He makes you holy unto Him. Everything about our lives, Brother Walt, being holy, holy in our character, when no one else is around in our thought life, holy in our relationships and our positions that we live and fulfill in our life, holy, holy. 
That means separate him to God. You know, I, I, I do it unto God. The life that I live is not mine, but it's God's. Amen. God, help me to live holy. So it's that of separation. But not only is it separation, but it's that of dedication. So separation, uh, it's from the world. But, but, but understand that holy not only means separation from the world, but it means dedication to something. So Brother Doug, I'm not only separated from the world, but I'm dedicated unto God. Amen. My life is dedicated unto Him. Once I lived for myself and the things of this world, but now I'm separated from that and I'm dedicated unto God. I, I'm set apart unto Him. I'm dedicated to Him in divine nature. You look at the Word of God from Old Testament to New Testament. God had things that, that were separated from the world but was dedicated unto Him. So everything that was holy about the tabernacle and the temple, everything that was holy about individuals' lives, it's because they were separate from the world, but they were dedicated unto God. So that holy or separation is not only separate, or holy is not only separate, but dedicated unto God, but it's also purification. It's the condition of. What is the condition of your life? God wants the condition of your life to be holy. Paul said to be the holiest I am holy. Holy tonight is purification in every way. Sister God, I want folks to look and think, man, that guy, his mind is pure. He doesn't think evil. He doesn't think the worst. But it's pure. It's great. The way he lives his life and everything that he does or the way she lives her life is because she's not only, he's not only separated from the world and dedicated to God, but the condition of her life is pure. Wow. God wants us to live pure tonight. Do you know that <clears throat> objects that were placed in service to God, they were anointed with oil? Think about David when he was just that ruddy shepherd boy out on the hillside. Sister Tiffany, God said to Samuel, there's yet another. And he called him in and he anointed him with a horn of oil. You know what that was saying? That there's something about the purification of this guy's life. He's separate from the world. And he's dedicated to God. But everything about him is pure. Instruments that were used in the temple and the tabernacle, uh, they were all pure because the condition of them was separate from the world and dedicated to God, but they were pure. And then and the fourth idea of holy is this, is consecrated. It means living holy and righteously. It means uh, confirmed uh, to the very divine nature of God. Oh, I, I want to be pure in my way, but I want to be consecrated. Consecrate me, Lord, unto you. I, everything about my life, I want it to be dedicated. Uh, the, the way that I conduct my life, uh, from the rising of myself in the morning, all my daily activities until I lay my head down at night. I want to be consecrated unto God. I want to be confirmed living holy and righteously. You said sanctification is this. It is both instantaneous, but it is progressive. It is practical, but it is progressive. Being sanctified means this, by the blood and by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God. I definitely believe in a separated and a wholeness lifestyle. But if we simply live in the manner of something without ever doing it because God has spoke to our heart, we become legalistic. God doesn't want Pharisees. But God wants men and women who love Him and are separated from this world. But dedicated unto Him that they may have a life and a life more abundant. Mr. Beth, if you come to the piano tonight, tonight I, I want to be a part of Mary Corey Bethel Church. Folks, we're separated. 
separate. Did you ever separate something before? The good from the rotten? Maybe you had to go through something and, and you know, uh, separate it by colors, separate it by size, whatever it is. God, when He looks down at the church, He separates us from the rotten. He doesn't legalistically do it that we think that we're righteous because of a certain way that we conduct ourselves, but because we love Him. We're separated from the world, but we're dedicated unto Him. And our heart and our life has purification from Him. And then we come to a place where we are consecrated Holy living and righteousness becomes who we are because we're consecrated to the things of God, not dedicated to the things of this world. Tonight I want to challenge you. How are you? God said, separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. We know that uncleanness, it brings death. Unholy living brings death. I mean, everything about our life may have been bounced back. And I, this is what I know because it's what I deal with every day. Every time Brother Josh, before I sit patient, it's hand sanitizer or over the sink and soap, Sister Tina. I like, I'm proud of where I work because in, uh, infection control is high on the priority. I mean, our, 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 our infection rate is so low and it makes, it makes our hospital have just uh, rewards and it makes it stand head and shoulders above the rest. Because they realize that germs and bacteria, it brings disease and death. And we want to abstain from that. We want life. Folks, choose life. But if we choose it physically, how much more should we choose it spiritually? That the washing of the water, the cleansing of ourselves from any sin. Because we don't want sin and disease, brother. Doug. We, we want life. And so we're set apart holy unto God that we may have life. Tonight, that's what I want this our service to be about. That I'm cleansing myself because you asked me to be separate. You asked me to be dedicated. But you ask me to be pure that I may have a life and a life more abundant. So in purification and consecration, here I am, sanctifying my life unto you. Would you gather it tonight and just allow God to wash you with the word and through his spirit that your worship may be pure and true and undefiled before tonight. Let's gather it.